Hi everyone, Hi, Katrina Summer here with my friend Kathy Tate, the Ball Warrior. <laughs> and Kathy and I actually just became friends because we are both authors in the Women Gone Wild book coming out August 16th in the US and 17th in Australia, where Kathy is. So um, we wanted to jump on and share some cool stuff with you because we both kind of talk about self-love in a way. You know, you know, I'm the business coach and all that, but I have to love yourself successful. So, and Kathy has some love self-love stuff as well and a, uh, with a challenge and everything so we're going to give you our best stuff around really making sure that you have more self-love in your life that's why we said kick butt you're going to get a, a, a butt kick in today about getting this in your life because i think we both have the same kind of attitude around it right kathy where it's like just do it like stop dying about it don't make excuses about it like just do it so, so, so give, give uh, everybody, everybody a little bit of insight about, about where you came from and what you do and, do and, and why you talk why about this. <laughs> Hey, Katrina. Thank you for that. Um, yes, I'm 100% in agreement with the just do it, suck it up <laughs> type of mindset. I am Kathy Tate, guys, from Australia. So hello from the future and the other side of the world. It is super cool to meet you all. If you have not seen me before, I am the bald warrior. I am called that because I'm bald and I fight for alopecia awareness through my social enterprise the bald warrior movement and uh, i'm in the midst of writing another book which is my life story which hopefully will be coming out in the next few months which will help loads and loads of people out there with alopecia i think so that's my main drive i'm also a podcaster we talk about mindset evolution which helps people like tweak the way they think to live happier healthier lives we're in 55 countries we're super excited to be reaching the world that way and uh, behind the scenes i'm a management accountant and business coach uh, so i do all that other fun stuff too i and uh, i have a lot of fun like working with people all around the world and lots of americans so hi america it's so good to talk to you <laughs> and of course after we finish the live we'll be sharing this to my tribe which are a lot of them in australia so please katrina introduce yourself for my people <laughs> that is so so uh crazy because crazy. i just did a book launch today and yesterday, yesterday. so my so thursday, thursday and my wednesday and i could have used some, some aussie love, love. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, you should have done this so, three days so, ago so. Uh, so I'm a, I'm a business coach. I've been coaching uh, entrepreneurs for 19 years this month, actually. And I love helping people make more money. I'm all about making more money. money. But where the love stuff comes in is where we don't do those revenue generating activities because of usually the love side of our life. Someone is not supportive and we're in the funk because we're not being supported or our monkey minds get in the back of it. And, and we're not, you know, you know it's know, stopping it's us from us doing the things we need to do to make money. Make money. So, so I do I touch on that a lot, a little bit in my coaching, but usually I just say, I just stop, stop it. it. <laughs> <laughs> and then move on. I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> So I have the button. So I'm kind of like a just do it, get her done kind of gal and when it comes to business and not settling in your, in your life. Um, but I also have a publishing company, so you can't see it, but I have like literally 12 books behind me. And now with the book launch today and the Women Gone Wild one on Monday, I'm going to have 14 books and nine international sellers. I'm just going to have there from there. But yeah, so it's fun. I love what I do. I love helping other people do all that. That stuff too. So, so. That's Yay. so cool. So and I'm so in cool. California, a real, real, you know, yeah. a real American, like in California. California. Although I don't get out much, it's really sad. It's my whole body now. So, <laughs> Kathy, <laughs> tell us why, why, why do you talk you more talk about, about self love? And, and is there a story behind that? Story that or? Oh, there is definitely <laughs> a story. Yes, um, and the biggest part of that story is I had none for most of my life, um, which is super sad, right? And and super drives me to do this because 
I, um, I had a tragedy when I was a little girl. My sister died from cancer. And a few months after that happened, my hair started falling out. And I was only nine years old. And growing up with such a visible disease um, really made me get quite ostracized. And I, at the same time, doctors were experimenting on me because they didn't know how to do anything. So I grew up with this kind of really warped self-image um, that I couldn't be weird looking. Um, I had to have hair to be beautiful and accepted. And that's what I was being taught by all the people around me from nine years old, right up until I first met another girl with alopecia when I was 18. So nine years later, and the very next week, she hung herself from despair. It was just devastating. I didn't meet another person with alopecia for another nine years um, or 10 years when I came to get, uh, she came to fit me for a, a suction wig. So back in the day, alopecia just was not known about. It was very shameful. There was all these taboos around it because of social norms. And anybody who kind of had it, hid it. And that's kind of what I'm walking, working towards now is to try and inspire people to let's change the social norm so that people don't have the pressure to hide it. Let's not make people feel like that in the first place. So that's kind of the background of why I work with self-love because if you don't have self-love, it's going to be super hard to go bald. <laughs> I can promise you that. So, um, you know, I really just want to be an inspiration to show people that what they see is not who you are. <laughs> They're two different things. Who you are is the way you behave. And that is one of the biggest messages in our podcast. In fact, that's episode one is who are you? And it's all about our behaviors. And it's the foundation of everything we talk about. Because that is really where we can make the changes to help people think a bit differently. And like you were saying, you know, just get in there and do it. Because I don't know about you, I suspect you've seen this too. But one of the biggest issues I see with my business people and my coaching people is that they just do not back themselves, right? They have lack of self-belief, they, they succumb to imposter syndrome, and they just get in their own way because of, you know, they don't have this sort of faith in themselves. And that inner faith is what I, I sort of pulled into myself to keep going through my alopecia journey was this inner uh, sort of self-belief that even if I was hiding, then there were other things I was going to do really well. And then as I came out of my wig closet, as I like to call it, I started applying that finally to the last piece of me. And that's kind of where I got to this spot where I am now, where I am absolutely unstoppable. I don't care what anybody says, what anybody thinks. I know why I am doing what I'm doing and I am going to succeed and it, I'll do anything it takes. Um, hence, four years later, still doing this and our podcast turns one in a few days. In fact, the day after our book release, the podcast turns one. So I'm having a super exciting half of the year. <laughs> That's awesome. Have fun. Yeah. I love to hear stories <laughs> like that. Isn't that crazy, Isn't that crazy though? though? I mean, I mean we're, we're just, just, just uh, and I don't want to say, I don't this, say this too loud because my 12 year old, old, who knows where she is, she but is, we're talking about self love a lot for dinner. Dinner. Because, dinner. Because, because, you know, she's 12, yeah, she's 12 and 12. we start getting these like, doubts, doubts and feelings, and about, feelings about ourselves. And ourselves. And it's not easy. I had it too. I had my boobs in fourth grade and I thought, oh my God. Like, that's not even a bad thing, but it was bad in 12th grade when nobody else had boobs in US. So it, I wore these huge big shirts and it was crazy. Um, yeah. Um, and everybody, I think, can relate because body image is a common thing, right? We want to look good. We want to present as attractive. We want to be able to, you know, attract our mate. This is all very normal human behavior. But societal rules have put 
so much pressure on girls and women to look a certain way that we've just got to change it. It's just not healthy. Yeah, yeah, I mm. agree. I agree. Oh, yeah. And then the second thing that I find um, is that so many of us I think you froze. Either that or you have a really long thought. <laughs> oh, darn it. Okay, well, why don't we come back to what you're saying, and I'll share why I talk about self-love, because I'm sure it'll snap out of it here in a second. Um, so why do I talk about self-love? Uh, I wrote this book in 2012, the Love Yourself Successful book. Um, before that, it was, I started my business in 2002, so that's 10 years before I wrote the book. Now, the book took, took me three years to write. So right around 2005 is when I started realizing that I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy in my personal life, uh, which projected in my business life. And I'm sure Kathy will be right back. So <laughs> add her back in. So, but I was in my starter uh, marriage, right, with my first husband, who was amazing. He was a really good guy. You know, he wasn't a bad person. We just, when I started my business, we grew apart. We grew apart because I was growing and he was staying and I was learning and he was staying and I was expanding my thought process and he was staying. And so those two years that we were married when I had my business was probably the hardest years for me because I would go to, I'm a really positive, upbeat person. I would go to networking events and everybody like, how's it going, Katrina? What are you doing? I'm like, everything's great. Yay. Because I thought that's how I needed to be. But really inside I was like, hmm, I was just, I mean, I would cry myself to sleep because I was so unhappy with my personal life. <laughs> and uh, it was just, it was just disheartening to, come home and not have and have somebody say oh well you should go get a job like it's, it doesn't look like it's working out do you really sure you want to do this his fears drove his uh, anti um support for me growing my business when i was in an excited mode first couple of years is when you're learning all the new stuff and i was really excited and so i uh i just wasn't being uh, loved or I didn't have the love and attention and affection that I needed in my marriage. And so I had to make the decision to leave the marriage, right? I already tried to work it out and say, Hey, just come to an event. Just come. He wouldn't even come and watch me speak, even if it's in the local area, um, in the evening after work. Right. So he wouldn't come and support me and just be in the audience as a supporter. Um, because he just didn't have any interest, nor did he want to have any interest. Like my current husband, he does, he does care what I do and he has some interest and I think he's learned by osmosis some things and he helps make my events and all, but he doesn't want to hang out with me every day around the business or anything, which is totally understandable. He has his own things, but that lack of support really um, affected the, the productivity and the effectiveness that I was having in my marketing and my lead generation and my sales and me wanting to even leave the house to go to the networking event in the first place. So that's where the first part of the love stuff came into my life. And I didn't see it then. I was just going through it, right? And then fast forward a few years when I was in the dating world, right? So the when I had when I met somebody and they were, again, not really the right person for me, but at the time I thought they were, and they weren't that supportive either. I was like, huh, you know, I really want someone who's going to be supportive with, um, with what I'm doing. And Kathy, I'm just kind of sharing my take on the stuff. <laughs> I know we popped up. <laughs> and so my, um, that boyfriend at the time, uh, didn't stick around more than two years and he broke my heart, but I thought he was going to be the one, right? And uh, luckily, I uh, learned to um, that I needed to work on myself. So that's when I went and worked, did a lot more work on myself. But it was mostly in regards to um, how I was in relationships, because I, I did have a I had a very masculine approach to my relationship. And so this book that we're both in, Women Gone Wild, is a very is the feminine 
what's the tagline? Oh my god, I don't have <laughs> the guy, the feminine guide to fearless living. Yes. So, and I thought, do I really fit in that and feel so masculine all the time, kicking people in their butt, telling them what to do, you know, running uh, just in control, running these businesses? Anyway, so. Yeah, that's how I was in relationships too. And guys, you know, the kind of guy that I wanted didn't really want that kind of a girl. So I learned a lot. I took care of myself. I invested in relationship workshops and self-development stuff and came out on the other end. And when I said, uh, set my intention for the guy that I wanted in 2012 in January, I said, this is what I want. I was in the great place, right? I was putting out the right energy. I had the right intention. And within six months, boom, there was Jason. So now he now we're married, and it's been nine years. So, um, but I know how other people's energy and lack of support can affect your effectiveness, your funk. You can be in a funk, your energy. So I say, put it, you know, get in your energy bubble if you're an entrepreneur and you got negative people around you. Uh, so I talk more about the toxic relationships and how to stop settling for those and how to get you know, really take charge of your own life. And, and, uh, you know, it's, it's about that for me is that love. Cause I, I see a lot of it in my clients when they're not happy in a relationship or they're not happy with themselves and their body or whatever it is they're doing. It, it festers into your business and doesn't allow the money to come in. So that's kind of where I come from with the, with the self love. So, yeah. Um, fun conversation. I know you didn't hear my whole story. That's all right. Because, you know, I want to, um, I want to talk a little bit about like, what are, what are one of the two things you might suggest people can do to get started on a better self love path? And I know you have resources for them, but is there like a nugget you can share Kathy? Um, and then I'll try to think up the most important thing too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I think um, probably one of the biggest things, and we focus on it in the challenge for two whole days, is forgiveness. I think that a lot of people hold a lot of stuff with them for far too long. They replay it in their heads, which, you know, we're doing to ourselves. It only happened once, folks. And um, they really wallow in it and it stops them moving forward. So forgiving other people, forgiving yourself, it really sets you free. And like I said, we spend two days on that in the challenge because it's such an important concept to learn that you can forgive someone and set yourself free doesn't mean you're saying what they did was okay totally different thing right whatever they did's on them and that's their karma your part is how you respond how you take it forward or how you leave it behind and then you know a lot of time we have stuff we feel guilty about ourselves because we mucked up and then we don't let it go we just keep bashing ourselves over the head with it <laughs> we got to forgive ourselves too, people. So I'd say forgiveness is my number one biggie that we really step people through in order to move them forward. You, what about you, Katrina? What's yours? I Well, as I was saying before, stop settling is usually the message that I say. I say stop settling um, for crappy clients, for people who don't support you, for naysayers for people who talk down to you stop settling stop settling stop settling you deserve more there's the grass is always greener it really really is uh, but sometimes we just don't know what's on the other end we don't know and so we're scared to um take that leap right we're take to to take that leap and because we don't know what's on the other side it's kind of like walking on a little tightrope if you slip you're gonna poop you're gonna fall if you trapeze from one to the other and you don't catch the next one Whoop, you're falling, right? Even if there's a net, great. But if you yeah. settle in life, I realized that that first marriage, I was 35 years old when I got divorced, that I'm like, what if I live for another 50 years or 60 years? I certainly want to be loved and, and stuff. So love to me is really important. And um, so I would say, I would say stop settling and be love. So I was in a mastermind one time with a bunch of peers and it was the year before, like when I was trying to really get to a hundred thousand dollars in my business in the first, that year. 
Um, I was at like, I don't know, 80,000 or 90,000 or something. I just couldn't get to that, that 100. And I'm like, just tell me what to do, people. Just tell me what to do to make more money. I'm doing all these things. Da, 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 da. Do I need to change my marketing? Do I need to change my message? Do I need to change my website? Do I need to get in more places? What do I need to do? And all they kept saying was, be love. Be love. And I'm like, what the F does that mean? Like, I don't know. How to, that's, I don't know. That was when I really learned how to be instead of do or be and do because we need the being and the doing. So there's be love, there's stop settling. Yeah. 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 And one thing I've heard quite a few of my mentors say is we're not human doings. We're human beings. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, okay, well, that's a clever little word play. Like I know my podcast partner, Daisy, loves her little word play. She's got one almost every episode. Um, but this one's an important one, I think, because, you know, think about how we torture ourselves, right, with our self-talk. And that's completely normal until you know different. So yeah. you get one pass. Because now we're telling you it's not okay. You can't keep doing it. You got to take action and you got to start creating the life that you want. No one's going to hand it to you guys. You've got to get in the muck and you've got to fight for it. But the good news is there's just so many of us out here that can genuinely help you. You know, you don't need to feel lost or alone because whatever it is that you want to get into, you know, one of us from this book is going to have a, the right connection for you because, like, 22 freaking amazing women that live all around the world, like, how could there not be the right person in there? And this book just has some phenomenal authors that I'm so excited to get to know better and uh, I'm super excited. I got to know Katrina a little bit already. Um, I love interacting with people from the other side of the world and seeing what's happening over there. I love being in the future. That excites me. <laughs> but I also love showing people that it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter your circumstances. There is always a way if you put your mind to it and have that support system because I'm 100% on board with, um, you know, be really careful who you're hanging out with. Um, you know, I have been very, very careful about that in the last few years in my life because I've had so many toxic people, um, you know, be in my life because of how I used to feel about myself and, you um, uh, realize the impact that they can really have on you. If you hang around negative people, that's obviously going to be the energy in the air and it's going to rub off on you because we are energy people. That's what we are. Like it's all about vibrations. Um, and one other tip, I guess, for our listeners is that the number one vibrational energy that you can reach above everything else is gratitude. It's higher even than love. So mm -hmm. start with some gratitude about what you do have in your life and that starts flipping your story from what is lacking or what I don't have or I, I don't like. Let's flip it and go, well, what can we be grateful for? Because if you seriously sit down and look around, a lot of our shit is first world problems. Like let's be real here. What are you grateful for? I bet there's, there'd be a hundred things. If you sat down and just went for half an hour, I'm writing nothing about something I'm grateful for, you would surprise yourselves, guys. I'm, I'm, I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Yeah. I agree with you. Totally. I agree with you. Hey, so tell them what the chapter is that you wrote in Women Gone Wild, which is out next week. What's your name in your chapter? Uh, the name of it, I actually am not sure because David keeps changing it. <laughs> but the theme, the theme is um, embracing your uniqueness and, you know, living without fear. And that was a really big lesson for me, of course, because I am 
very unique looking um, and I chose to do this, right? So behind that is sort of why I chose to do this and that's where my chapter kind of goes into a little bit of my background around sort of what I faced as a, a person with alopecia at a young age, at a teenage age and how it affected my mental health in such a way that it led me to act for a really long time, kind of like an imposter. So I would pretend to look one way and then at home, you know, be myself. And because I was hiding it, I was carrying around a freaking huge secret, which is super, super unhealthy, even though it wasn't a malicious secret. I was hiding my truth and it started becoming a boulder on my back. After 30 years, I was so miserable that I could not just be genuinely myself. I had to have the secret. And I eventually kind of went, what the fuck am I doing? <laughs> you know, what am I doing to myself? And that's when I started the journey about learning all this stuff. And the greatest thing I ever did for myself was tattoo my head. It changed everything for me. And it did that because I, I used it to empower my own version of beauty. So I found the way that I could be unique and beautiful to myself so I felt amazing and then I didn't care what anybody else thought. And so that's kind of where I go in my chapter. And then I talk about like embracing fear because one of my like big values is to not fight your fears. I sort of think that we all have like these specific fears because they're actually things that we're meant to work on. And so it's like a signpost, here I am. <laughs> so let's go and embrace it and walk into it because one thing I know for sure is that on the other side of fear is freedom. And that is really my huge message to all of you, is on the other side of fear is freedom. And uh, I know it because I've lived it. That is, that's a good quote right there. The other side of fear is freedom. Totally. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's so great. You got to let go. Ah, I love it. So my chapter uh, in the Women Gone Wild book is a little bit more Practical, tactical, I guess. Like, well, it's all good, but it's all, it's called the power of focus. So I get, I'm, I'm a trainer and a workshop leader by heart. You know, I just want to tell people what to do to get more money and maybe more successful. It's the doing. I can't stop it. And so it's the power of focus. I talk about like the six personality traits that uh, help you be more focused and how you can get those. You don't have to have them right now. You can learn how to be different um, because I see a lot of entrepreneurs especially who are just all over the board right and overwhelmed and unorganized and I am probably one of the most organized people that I know uh, and I'm very specific on where things go and what they're called in, in in my computer in my files in my shopping cart I mean everywhere so focus is allowed me to get where I am today and uh, make a lot more money so it's um, important so yeah you'll have to read my chapter yeah and I know we're giving away a bunch of that's gifts with the books so you got to get those later but for now was there something else you wanted to say i wanted to get like oh. where can they get more from you and what's the good thing about <laughs> self-love that you oh no i was just going to reply to you because i think your chapter is super exciting right practical steps to make more money how can you go wrong that it's awesome i can't wait to read it Awesome. Yay. <laughs> I know we're both so busy. I haven't had a chance to read any of the chapters yet. And so I'll have to like get it. Well, I want to get the print book because I like print books. I'm not a big ebook reader because I can't yeah, see. Yeah, I'm a pen person. I love I'm the like, feel of books. I've always been a reader since I was a little right? girl. Me you. too. Yeah. And the just the, I'm on the computer all day. I don't want to be staring at a screen. So anyways, so tell uh, people where they can get more from you regarding the self-love stuff that we've been talking about today, Kathy. Okay, yes, we have, uh, if you jump online and go to wild-self-love.boldwarrior.net, 
um, you can access a very special freebie just for our book release. Uh, you cannot find it any other way but that URL, guys, so write it down if you want it. If you just want to see what I'm up to, you can jump over to boldwarrior.net uh, or you can jump over to baldandblonde.live, which is our podcast website, which tells you what's going on with the podcast and where we're at, and you can listen right there on the homepage. So that's how you find me if you want to see more of me. Awesome. Cool. And if you guys want more of the Love Yourself Successful stuff, you can go to, guess what, loveyourselfsuccessful.com. And there is a free audio there for you that um, where I talk through a lot of the concepts that I share in the book. And then you can also buy the book on that page if you want to. Um, I'm actually in the process of revising it right now because um, – it just needed a revision. I'm going to relaunch it here pretty soon. Not this month because I've had three book launches this month. So it's going to be a little bit. But <laughs> I'm excited. And, uh, you know, it's never too it's never too late to finally take charge of your life or do what the hell you want to do or break free of a negative relationship or just go do what you're passionate about. So... Yeah. Absolutely. 100% agree. Just do something. Stop wallowing and looking back and, and find a way to make your first step forward. Yay. All right, Kathy, so good to see you. you and, so um, it was fun to actually get to know each other on this <laughs> Facebook Live. Yeah. Sometimes you do a Facebook Live not because you just want to get to know the person, which <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to do all my get to know you calls on a Facebook Live. So it can be yeah, a little yeah. different. Right? <laughs> Always be marketing, right? Yes. Yeah. So, Absolutely. Awesome. Absolutely. Have a great day Bye. there in Australia. Thank you. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.